Once again, I am meal prepping, but there are some prerequisite ingredients that I'm making instead of buying, so let's go over that now. But first, a beverage. I just make a really strong cold infusion by letting it brew in the refrigerator overnight or longer. Oh, and this is Thai tea, by the way. Instead of food coloring, it's colored with the natto seeds. So as you can see, once I mix it, it just looks like regular black tea. Now we're gonna make some nut milks to add to our future meals, which is entirely sponsored by my pantry. Of course, to keep it fresh, you need to keep things rotating. So first up, almond milk. You wanna soak these for at least eight hours, if not overnight. We do that to remove the enzyme inhibitors, which basically is what keeps the seed dormant. Once it's hydrated though, it's ready to start growing into a plant. In other words, sprout. So long story short, this is gonna make it easier to digest. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about and want to understand the process, try growing an avocado seed at home. After draining, rinsing them, I first blend them with just enough water, like not the full amount entirely because the straining process, we wanna make it as short as possible. In fact, I normally do this process in my juicer, but did I feel like getting on a step ladder to reach it? No. Personally, I like to flavor and sweeten with the date, so I'll put it back into the blender, but you can add it directly to your bottle with more water if you want and just shake that up. But another bonus of doing it this way though, is that you can taste it at this stage before deciding how much you want to dilute it. That way you can really customize not only the taste, but also the quantity to compete with what you normally spend in store. So you can make it less expensive, thicker, thinner. And also considering cost, if you reuse the pulp, essentially you've gotten two products for the price of one. For now, I'm gonna freeze mine until I have a chance to dehydrate it into almond flour. In a really old episode, I used this to make granola. So that's another option as well. I'm also gonna make cashew cream and pumpkin milk. The only thing that makes this a cream instead of a milk is the amount of liquid I've added. And cashews are really easy because it doesn't require any straining, like just blend it together, done. The pumpkin seeds though, you do have to strain. As you can see, it's clinging onto the container nicely, but this consistency isn't even the final result. It'll get thicker after I refrigerate it. And the thing about them is even though I'm using like a very fine uh, woven bag, the pulp will come through. So just be mindful that you're not squeezing really hard. And this pulp I'm also saving because I wanna see if I can turn it into tofu. <laughs> And on a completely different day that I actually could be bothered to take out my juicer, I made ginger shots.
And because I was so miserable when I got sick last month, I am not taking no chances. Instead of taking elderberry syrup individually, I'm pairing the two together. So if you don't normally add apple to your ginger shots and you find them, you know, a little too strong, sweetening it this way will make it more tolerable plus add more antioxidants. And if you're like, girl, did you just do all that for three shots? Just know that juicing is the last resort. These apples was about to go bad. Plus this is when I don't feel like chewing the ginger because normally I just eat it. I also made a sauce for the week and I don't want to insult the actual dish by referring to this by that name, but essentially I'm aiming for an inspired romesco. So I started off with roasted peppers, olive oil as is normal, but then I subbed roasted tomatoes for puree. Listen, I, I needed to use up what I had. Sub the almonds and hazelnuts for pecans, cause again, that's what was in my pantry. And also strawberry vinegar instead of red wine vinegar. This you can enjoy over veggies or protein, pasta, you can spread it on your sandwiches, just all the things, all the things. And finally, the good stuff. Lunch this afternoon was a smoothie using the almond milk we made. Just something basic to hold me over. And it wouldn't be an A-betweeny special if I wasn't making a soup. Brought to you by my braces. Because post-appointment, I am on a baby food diet. For about three days out of every month, I chew nothing. We're going to make a maple miso butternut squash. First make the marinade, which of course, miso, maple, you get it. I added olive oil because I have like three different kinds in my pantry, but you can feel free to go with sesame seed. And I put it in the oven, I think at 350 Fahrenheit until soft. And while that's roasting, I'm gonna make veggie stock cause my scrap container in the freezer is full. I like to saute these before adding water. You can even roast them, but feel free to skip it if you're short on time. I started off with onions because I didn't have shallots and uh, the minced garlic that I prepped in the last video. Then I added some uh, white wine, let it reduce, a couple of tablespoons of broth, reduced again. And if you want to emulsify this into like a thicker sauce, you can slowly whisk in some butter or another fat before you add in your veg. Since I had red cabbage in the stock, the color is kind of pink, but generally I finish this off with mushroom powder anyway, so that'll camouflage it. Now 
Now, technically, you can stop here and enjoy the glazed butternut squashes aside. But again, me and my baby food diet are good with soup. So I added this to a pot with stock, used the hand blender to break it down just enough. I still want it kind of rustic, that way you get a little mouthfeel. Added our pumpkin milk and then adjusted seasoning to taste. Recipes, they're in the description box. If you do want to see any of the things that I own, all of that I am putting on the blog. And I know I've been talking about Squarespace for the longest, but it's the company that grows with you, you know? Because they're always coming out with new products. Like just the other day, I noticed that they now offer client invoicing. And if you do anything freelance, you know how convenient that is. So I can't wait to try that. And apparently you can offer courses too. So if you wanted me to walk you through like the basics or show how to cut vegetables, apparently this would be the place for that. I'm actually curious to know what that interface looks like, but if for some reason you still haven't signed up for Squarespace by now, if you do need it, my code A between E will get you a discount or you just head to squarespace.com backslash A between E. And after all that, I was hungrier than soup. So I grabbed the last black bean burger in my freezer, the pickled onions that I made in last week's video, made some chipotle mayo, threw it on a pretzel bun, and called it dinner. And although I like these burgers, I don't love how easily they fall apart. So I might attempt to make my own at some point, but we'll see. The next day I prepped some chia seed pudding, starting off with cashew cream because it gives it the perfect consistency. I am particular about textures. And that's why I don't like mushrooms. So if you've ever had or made chia pudding with almond milk or any liquid that's thin like that and hated it because it looks and feels like hair gel, I can almost guarantee you'll like it like this. I'm gonna make two versions. The first one is my go-to banana. This one's frozen, so that's why it looks like that. Uh, cinnamon, ginger, vanilla, and I'm using two dates. I know that sounds like too many for only one cup of liquid, but don't be afraid to add more sweetener than you think you need because it won't taste as sweet when it's cold. Also, this may not seem like enough chia seeds, but remember, they absorb up to 10 times their weight. So apart from using cream versus liquid, this ratio also dictates the final consistency. The next one though, I wanted to use a different sweetener. And if you know my love for matcha, you know my favorite latte recipe is with my homemade pistachio milk. However, that's only gonna make but so many drinks. So I was like, why don't I just make a syrup? Don't worry, this is not like making sugar wax. This is very easy. All you do is bring the sugar and water up to a boil. And then once it does, you turn it back down to a simmer until the sugar crystals are completely dissolved. It only takes about 10 minutes. And as I'm sure you've already noticed, this one is gonna be pandan flavored. This is another item that I found in my pantry that I completely forgot about and I don't know why because it's delicious. If you haven't tried it before, please do.
and from the stove noodle stir fry that I made in last week's video, I took the remaining snow peas and red onions, added in some cucumber, and turned that into a quick salad. It keeps in the refrigerator really well. It stays crunchy for days. But on top of that, I tried a fava bean tofu. And for the dessert, I whipped some coconut cream to put on top of the pound on pudding. 